Welcome to the show that rips the label off of fashion. We'll be bringing you everything you need to know about what to wear this summer. You don't need to be a fashion slave to be a style icon, and you don't need to spend a fortune to make a million dollars. Each week, I'm going to take on designer clobber in a catwalk face-off to show you guys how to get designer looks at a fraction of the price. Also on tonight's show, my fashion insider, Alexa Chung, meets the king of bling, the wagtastic Roberto Cavalli. What do you think of what I'm wearing? Well, it's not my style, honestly. She'll also be putting must-have items to the test. I don't want any bitching, I don't want any biting, I don't want any pushing. From high heels to bikinis, we love them, but are they practical? Hello, Liverpool! Plus, I travel north, south, east and west to see which British street style is the best. Tonight, Liverpool style icons strut their stuff. And talking style icons, I meet some notorious fashion slaves and get them to confess their style secrets. Tonight, it's Jerry Hallowell and boy, do I dig out some dirty laundry. What is this one? Sometimes... You know, you get it right, and sometimes you get it really wrong. Welcome to my fashion fix. This is where you find out how to get designer looks on a high street budget. So backstage, we're getting ready for the catwalk face-off. I'm about to take on the gods of fashion with the best the high street have to offer. On this side, I've got four girls, but I'm going to be styling exclusively in high street gear. And on the other side, where the designer stuff is, the girls are going to be dressed only in luxury brands. Basically, me and them are going head to head. And then the audience need to decide which collection they like the best. The designer stuff is going to be worth thousands and thousands. And the stuff on the high street side that I've styled, all of it comes in at under 800 quid. Believe me, it's going to be one hell of a challenge. And the theme of tonight's challenge is romance. Fresh from the catwalk, it's a super feminine trend and designers worldwide have nailed some cracking looks that are perfect for a dreamy summer. I'm going to show you guys how to get those catwalk looks for less and to prove it, I'm pitting myself against the most powerful fashionistas in the country. When it comes to clothes for these women, money is no object. There's always going to be people in every high street to make, making a quick buck for clothes that really are not very flattering, are not very well made. I think now people are kind of getting sick of disposable fashion. The cut and the fabrics and, you know, the workmanship and the craftsmanship, you can't really get that in the high street. Something that irritates me is, of course, the mass market. I don't like going to a party or a supermarket or anywhere and seeing some girl wearing the same thing that that girl's wearing, that that girl's wearing. It's so unindividual. So what are the fashionistas going to hit me with? Designer outfit number one comes from Mary Gay McKee, who is responsible for annual sales worth £400 million at the one and only Harrods. Yeah, no, I think that sums up the trend perfectly. The look that we've put together consists of a short Prada cocktail dress made of layers of chiffon. Oh, and perfect. a little clutch. Great. It's from Valentino's last collection. Um, it's not going to date. It's £1,020, but I think you're going to get your money's worth. Now, the shoe I love, it's made of satin. It's exquisite. It's got the beautiful red soles, like the lipstick on the shoe wants the ladies ready. Ruffles, cream, fabulous outfit. Perfect. Designer outfit number two is chosen by Erin Mullaney from Browns. What I'm thinking is maybe we should look at these amazing Christopher Kane dresses. And the reason I love Chris Kane for Romantic is because of the sheer transparency and all the ruffles. It's a 2,000 pound dress. These are all um, real python strips that have been hand sewn. And I think it just makes it really sexy and romantic. I think these amazing Louboutin shoes are perfect for this look because they just add a bit of an edge. It toughens up the romantic look um, and it makes it a bit younger and a bit cooler. Salvatore Ferragamo, um, just incredible bag. Um, I think oversized clutches are a really important trend right now. 
What do you think? Oh, I love it. I love these rings. They're only 90 quid. So, you know, we can get two or three of them and pile them on all together. It certainly polishes off the entire look. The third designer outfit is put together by Lena Basma from Selfridges. I think that would be absolutely amazing for a summer wedding. I've put together a beautiful temply dress. It's halter neck, it's draped on the hip. It's not overpowering. Try those putting those shoes on the floor by the dress and seeing if that works. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. What about a little bit of um, jewellery with a, with a gold cuff and it's got these li little bits of diamante. So that works. Perfect. The last designer outfit is hand-picked by Brit Smith Start. First of all, because nude and flesh colour is such a great trend, we should do um, a nude look. What is it, Pixie? Don't you like nude? Oh, we put the vests under the blouse. And then we tuck, we put that in, we tuck it in. If you're gonna buy one shoe this season, this is the greatest shoe because they go with absolutely everything. They're a no-brainer. You, you know, Pixie, that's really enough. I think I have to put you in the naughty room. <laughs> If this was your outfit, this would be your best accessory, wouldn't it? <laughs> These designer divas are catwalk confident and ready to lay down their very expensive gauntlet to whatever the high street and I have to offer. You can get a floaty dress from the high street. However, I think, you know, you won't get the fabric. You know, an inexpensive piece of lace can often look like a, a net curtain. Fashion! Okay, so come on, tell me what have we got this week? Okay, check out this number. This is a Christopher Kane dress. It looks amazing. I love the detail. This is unbelievable. What is this made of? I don't know, but I think it's perfect for the romance thing. Do you know what? I mean, it kind of is. I've kind of seen it before. You're not. Oh, you're not that bothered. Well, yeah, Are you whatever, bothered by whatever, these, whatever. There, Mr. Gold? Oh. <laughs> I have to say, I do love those. They are brilliant. And also, uh, there's a little Mew Mew belt as well, which I think is really oh, nice. All the accessories God, in this bit are amazing. It's going to be so difficult. Do you know what? Because romance is all about those big designers. It exactly. really is. But I have. To say, I have to say, no, do you know what? I'm actually bricking it. Really? I'll be very honest. I'm bricking it, but oh. the audience will be my judge. The designer competition is tough, but I'm a man with a plan. And next, I reveal the secret ingredients for my romantic fashion recipes. These places are absolute gold mines. They're like what a star absolute stylish dream. Alexa Road Test, a girl's favorite friend, high heels. On your marks, get set. My studio audience battle to squeeze into Jerry's birthday pants. Hello. <laughs> but first, these are my personal tip-offs on this week's must-haves. It's a prom dress. It's a tartan prom dress. It's the dress shape for summer and the fabric of the season. In store Monday. Fashion's gone green. This bag is a knit bag without the price tag. It's a fashionista's favourite colour and has the must-have bow to boot. And blue suede shoes are back. Platforms are the heel of the season. It's a fashionista's look at a fraction of the price. There'll be more must-haves later. Welcome back to my Fashion Fix. This is where you find out how to get designer looks on a high street budget. It's less than 40 minutes to my catwalk showdown and backstage hair and makeup teams are hard at work. I want to prove you don't have to be a label slave to look a million dollars. So I'm taking on the gods of fashion with the best the high street has to offer. For them, it's money no object. For me, it's a budget of 800 quid. Can I pull it off? Welcome to my world, the British High Street. This now is Romance Gold. This is High Street at its absolute best. These pieces are so similar to what Lomban's done this season. The attention to detail is wonderful. The fabric, the, the satin is beautiful. Look, this dress 
costs under £200. And look at the amount of fabric that's involved. Phenomenal. The secret to my success is in the shopping. I can't believe girlfriend's checking my notes. <laughs> Pick the right ingredients, add a little twist of your own, and the rest should come together. These places are absolute gold mines. They're like what a st absolute stylist dream. Because what you get is you get all the small trimmings that you put onto clothes that make them look absolutely amazing. It is that detail. Earlier on, I went to Zara. I found this amazing little simple black cocktail dress. It cost 69 quid, 70 pounds. Then I went into H&M and I found these black corsages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on a one shoulder strap just here. So I need some material to do that. And do you know what I'll probably do as well? I'll probably spray the flowers with some starch because at the moment they're flopping around a little bit, looking a little bit cheap. So, for my first catwalk outfit, take one dress from Zara under 70 quid. Trezan, just jump up there for me, gorgeous. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this up and make it much, much shorter. All the designers have taken the length of skirts up this season. Legs are out. So instantly, this is going to fool the guys in the audience because they're going to think, do you know what? Short skirt designer. So from high street to high end, in literally 25 snips. Often when you buy from the high street, you see these seams. Designers will never show those seams because it makes the dress look cheap and you can see how it's made. So this costs about 90 pence per meter and it's just from a haberdashery shop. And all you do is you stitch it on over the top of that seam. If you can't stitch, you can get this amazing product called a wonder web where literally you place it on there you iron it on, on the wrong side round, and that will stick to it instantly, and that will go through about 15 washes without coming off. Okay, so now I'm gonna add on a strap to make it asymmetric or one-shouldered. I'm gonna pin it on with a safety pin on either side. Just here, I have got a bowl of black corsages, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decorate the whole top section of the dress, and what you're gonna get is a real high-end feel. It can't be any easier than that. And what I'm going to do is when you're on stage is I'm going to pin some of this to your face and give it all of that real hardcore, gorgeous touches. I love it. Perfect. And now, finally, no outfit would be complete without a fabulous pair of shoes. This outfit is going to give all those designers a run for their money and it comes in at less than £200. Gox in town. <laughs> Fashion darling and it girl Alexa Chung is our road tester. This week she's putting high heels to the test. Designer and high street, they're all gorgeous. But are they practical? Are they durable? We're about to find out. Take 15 pairs of running shoes and 15 women from London running clubs. Ditching their trainers, they'll battle it out over 400 metres in a selection of designer and high street heels. All the height of fashion this season. Can they answer the eternal question? As heels get higher and more bizarre, are they still wearable? Oh my God! Oh my God. God. Hello ladies, welcome to the Lee Valley Racetrack. Yes, you've guessed it today. We're going to be road testing this season's highest heels. They look nice, but are they practical to run in? We're going to be finding out. So everybody, grab your running shoes. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. <laughs> but I rather like these. Do you like them? Oh yes. But they look horrific. They actually and they feel, probably feel horrific. No, they feel quite nice because your foot's actually quite flat and you get the extra leg length all the same. <laughs> Confident, eh? The words tempting and fate spring to mind. Oh, what a nasty fool. Let's see that one again. And to think we're not even racing yet. This does not bode well for the Alexandro Delacqua. OK, ladies, the rules are very simple. It's the first hill over the finish line will be the winner of the road test. I don't want any bitching, I don't want any biting, I don't want any pushing. If you do fall, the stretcher is at the ready. So, on your marks, get set. And they're off. The Natasha Marrow is faring very well in 
the central lane, good steady speeds despite a very high heel. LK Bennett has a strange looking run, but she's up and she's steady and that's all that matters. June is coming up on one of the inside lanes with a very determined expression, but it's a conceptual heel from United Nude that's taking the lead. Budget shoe Barrett's are faring well so far, but the multicolored mules are looking very unsteady. Ouch. Impressive to see the Antonio Berardi shoes with no heel moving anywhere at a steady pace. Very surprising. But yes, it's still United Nude up front. Aldo is chasing from behind with just meters from the finishing line. Oh yes, they've done it. United Nude have won the title at a whopping 60 miles an hour. Amazing. Well done. Following closely behind, we have Aldo, Extreme Footwear and Natasha Mario. A few sore ankles and minor injuries at the finish line, but still no visible breakages and no sign of the two remaining races. Second to last, we have the Antonio Berardis, which means coming in last at a disappointing three miles an hour is the Alessandro Dell'Acqua. They think it's all over, and it is. You're the, you're the victor! Hand up. Yes! She yes. won! This is amazing! Uh, what do you think helped? Was it the strap? Was it the heel? What gave you the leverage to win? I think it's uh, based on the heel and the height. Or well, whatever it was, congratulations, you're the victor. Thanks very much. And you lost. There's just not the flexibility in these shoes to be able to stride out. I think that's, that's <laughs> the first of many problems. <laughs> Surprisingly, all of this season's high heels passed the road test. No major injuries were suffered and no heels were broken, actually. And in actual fact, the most sculptural and conceptual of heels actually won the race. So yes, this season's high heel is wearable. Fashion. Every single week, we're bombarded with images of celebrities looking fabulous and sometimes hideous. If paparazzi pictures ever told a fashion story, then this week's guest reads like a star encyclopedia. She even managed to turn a tea towel into one of the most iconic dresses of the 90s. But when the Spice Girls storm a stage for a reunion tour, it was bye-bye dishcloth, hello designer, when Roberta Gavali gave the girls a more expensive look. So this is the one that old is that Gavali reinvented. Yeah. Can we get it out? Is that all right? Yeah. Is it still a bit sweaty? Because I, I saw you on that stage and you were jumping around like a monkey. I saw that. If you look at the detail of the, the stones. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, it is absolutely phenomenal. Look at that. Jerry may have kept the look for prosperity's sake, but when she walked away from Ginger in May 98, it wasn't only the band she left behind. Clothes were a big part of you reinventing yourself. It's like growing up, like a teenager. Yeah. I didn't want anything to do with like hot yeah. pants and lipstick. I suddenly wanted to go, no, I'm grown up and serious. Jerry's got a look for every bit of her life as a mum, as a children's writer, and even as a comeback queen. This was a lot of money. It's from a vintage shop. It was almost £2,000. All the girls, they all kind of look the same. Look like they have the same stylist. Didn't they? You know, um, I wanted Victoria. to bring colour but and you joy. You suddenly then mince down the middle of that photograph. <laughs> right? All this black. And then you're sitting like this. Hi! And that's you down the middle of that photo. Okay, so I've seen the dresses she's kept, but what about the ones she didn't? It's time to lift the lid on Jerry's dirty laundry. I have searched high and low yeah. to track down some of your dirty laundry from the past, all right? Lovely. Okay, and I've got some of it here. And I want you kind of to justify some of it to me, all right? Okay. Okay, so you're ready. So the first one I have here, do you remember this one from Morgan? Oh, my God. You do? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, you've officially been gawked. So oh, where did you, you wear? That? Where did you wear I went, this one to? To Prince Charles's house, Highgrove. I have so, to say, right, you were going to sweet. see the future king of England. This is In not a, a full-length skirt. You must, if you bent over, he would have been but smiling look, for a look, week. Look. I'm, like, I've got a little cardigan going on, I which is kind of quite demure. I, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love that one, right? Anymore. Okay, there's another one. I'm so okay. impressed. Now tell me, Jerry. What is this one? I can't remember where I wore this. You can't. It was the premiere. In New York. Exactly. It was in New York. It was the premiere of your, the, the Spice film. And you wore this at the premiere. I'm so obvious, this, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But you've always been so overly so slightly experimental. Slightly Yeah, quite I mean, eccentric and just playful as well. And sometimes, you know, you get it right and sometimes you get it really wrong. Absolutely. Obviously, I'd rather clearly. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, it's taking a little bit of risk. Right, OK. I've got one final item here. Now, I... 
took these from your house this week, didn't I? You did. Okay, so what's the history behind these, Jerry Hallowell? Okay, I wore them last year in Santa Fe. It was on my birthday, and um, I think that's where you can get away with it. But do you know what? I have to say, I, I love this because you, you're 35 years old, absolutely minted, and you spent eight ninety nine in River Island on a pair of shorts for your birthday. Girlfriend, that's a got high five. Can I keep these? You can. Can I have these? Because I want to give them away. Who here thinks they can squeeze into these? Because if you can, you get to keep Jerry Hallowell's very own shorts. Right, come with me. Who's first? Right, come up here. It's dead easy, right? You have got 10 seconds. 10 seconds to squeeze into those. Right, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Is she in? Oh, no, she's not in. Please. 2, 1, and then out. No, 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 girl. No, girl. No, girl. They are not on. Come on. Right, who's next? Come here. Okay, this is not fair. Jerry, should they take all their clothes off? Definitely. They, should they need to have the bottom half off, don't they? Absolutely. Okay, you ready? Ready? Come on, come on. Oh, like that. All right, get out. Who's next? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I think we've got a winner! You have just won Jerry Hallowell's birthday shorts when she was 35. Get up, Rocco! Jerry. Well done. With all my chinky heart, I love you. Thank you for coming to the show tonight. Love you. Give it up for Jerry. By the end of tonight's show, I've got to create four romantic outfits from the high street. I've got just £800 to conjure up these fabulous looks. Catwalk outfit number two, floral dress, Zara, £99. Making dresses look expensive from the high street isn't just about stitching up, and it doesn't have to be too complicated at all. This whole romantic season has been personified with these gorgeous floral prints. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is take off this belt, and I am gonna change it with another one. The reason why this works is because it's a juxtaposition between the soft femininity and floral print, and the hard, black and gold detail. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is take this belt and use it as a head wrap. At the moment, it's looking fabulous, but we need something more going on around Kat's face. And we're literally gonna tuck that inside just there and leave it in a really, really messy kind of half knot. It's that detailing which makes it look high end and not high street. And all we need now is the accessories, so, a selection of different bangles. And remember, little styling tips, you don't need to make things symmetrical. You can mix different textures with different prints, with different colors, and the same thing with bangles as well, on both wrists. And then to tie in all the gold, I want some heavy gypsy style earrings. Finally, a pair of shoes. A little top tip for an outfit like this, it's so feminine, it's so gorgeous. We've got the edginess of the belt, we've got all the gold going on. You want a simple shoe. What you don't want to do is see the skirt float and then see some big garish shoes popping out the bottom. I would say from the high street this season, these shoes are absolutely one of my top star buys. Another gold special. The whole outfit comes in at a whisker under 200 quid. Coming up. My travelling catwalk lands in Liverpool to hunt down a street style icon. Alexa gets told off by design god Roberto Cavalli. What do you think of what I'm wearing? Well, There's not my style, honestly. And I get all romantic with my final outfits to prove you don't need to spend, spend, spend to get that star style. Even I can't believe this is all under 200 spackets. Forget the couture houses of Paris and Milan, great British style is street style. From the mods of the 60s, punks of the 70s, and new romantics of the 80s, we've always been fashion rebels and proud of it. 
I want to find the nation a new style icon, so I'm taking the catwalk on a road trip across the country. I'll be tracking down a shortlist of candidates from seven cities and bringing them together to battle it out in a grand final in London. So today I've arrived in Liverpool, the European capital of culture. Now they've definitely put themselves on the map when it comes to fashion, so I'm going to try and find myself a style icon. Before checking out the streets, I'm after some local knowledge in a favoured wag fashion haunt. Talk to me about the whole Liverpoolian style. Well, what are your girls looking for? It's a real weekend party city, Liverpool. So they'll start right from first thing in the morning. It's you know not unusual to see girls dashing into the store with a head full of rollers, you know, and then coming to pick up their alterations, yeah. ready for the big night out. So it's nails, spray tan, hair, everything. The, the works. Word. So will high maintenance stay high on the agenda as I rally the very best to represent in Liverpool? I'm looking for anyone with style. You, are, are you designers? No. Self-taught. Self-taught. Self style icons? Um, ourselves. Mm -hmm. I love that. So yeah. will you come on my runway today? We'll do it. Do you know what? Up there, and I'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Hi. Will you come on my runway? I certainly will. Come with me. With my sartorial battle cry echoing the streets, which scale style tribe will provide my winner? Hello, Liverpool! Commencing battle in the city of two football teams are the Wagabees. There's a nod to celeb bill and a polished attention to designer detail. So who's your big star icons? Um, just people like Jordan and people like that. I get my style from celebrities. If something new comes out, I'll go buy it or look for in magazines and see what the new style is. And in a very different designer direction, Liverpool offers up its very own homage to Vivian Westwood. I'm screaming out that the world can have something like this. Be born naked, the rest of it is drag. The DIY couturiers are out to prove style is most definitely not a label you can buy. I get a lot of influences from, you know, the new romantics kind of fashion movement. Because I do study fashion, that the suit that I've made, I've made it myself. While the quirky teen queens have made a look that's all their very own. The T-shirt was just a plain grey vest from H&M, which I splattered with paint myself. I just love colour, mostly high street brands. But I just like to look a bit quirky and different. Quite individual. Yeah, stand out in the crowd kind of thing. Gorgeous. And the classic chic chicks keep up that effortless style. How old are you again? Tell me again. Seven. Oh my God, I love that. I'm just so excited and I didn't think I'd ever do anything like this in my life anyway. But Liverpool is ready to show it can still lead the way with edgy fashion rebellion. From Germanic club stylers. Give it up for number one. To 80s inspired new ravers. I just love everything from the 80s and like my trainer brought up 1985 <laughs> and this was actually like a jumper from H&M but I bought it as in like a size 16 and wore it as a dress. Yes, Liverpool has the looks in abundance and I've got five firm favourites that stand out in the crowd. Robert Handler impressed me with this cutting edge outfit that he designed himself. He clearly has a future in fashion and looks original and unique in his style. The simple chic look Carol Parr has gone for really works and shows age doesn't matter in the style state. I love the way Jess Jones customised a simple vest with paint to really give her outfit an edge. She proves you can be cheap and chic. New Raver and Zoe is so original and out there, this clashing 80s outfit is street style at its very best. And finally, there's John Burr. You pulled off your look so simply, and you got your tailoring down to a tee, and you know what? You wear your stuff with absolute confidence. I've selected my five fashion leaders from among the finest of Liverpool, but who's going to win a place in my national final in London and a chance to become my street style icon 2008? And the winner of the Liverpool Heat is... Anzo! Give it up! Four and zero. Street 
style is all about showing your personality. And do you know what? Anne Zoe, to me, is just a huge personality wrapped up in a whole bag of fashion. I'm speechless. I'm happy. Best day of my life, literally. <laughs> I'm gonna give you what you want, what you want. With the catwalk face off only 20 minutes away, backstage is buzzing. The super expensive designer outfits are looking sexually hot, so I've really had to push the boat out with my third romantic creation. Dress, linear at House of Fraser, my most extravagant buy at 149 quid. Now this dress is from the high street. I don't think you can tell instantly, but it needs a little bit of summer. So I've bought some of these, which are basically little satin flowers, is I'm gonna stitch a row all the way around the top to try and persuade my studio audience that this is a designer frock. You don't want to do any more to this because otherwise it's going to look too over the top. What we can do is we can make it look more expensive by adding great accessories. So these are called motifs and there's two here and what I'm going to put a pin in the back. But this instantly gives it a contemporary edgy designer feel. Okay, so because this outfit is a gorgeous, fabulous evening outfit, it needs fabulous shoes. So I've got these gold strappy stilettos. Just pop your foot in there, my darling. Wonderful. And I'm going to reinvent them to make them look super expensive. These gorgeous little things are from Topshop and they're actually necklaces, but I am going to tie these around the foot and make them into very, very glam shoes. Now, Gina, Jimmy Choo, Le Boutin, all those really big designers do this to their shoes. So the best tip that I can give you about being your very own stylist is get creative and, you know what, think out of the box a little bit. By tying a necklace around the foot here, we've turned these shoes from 20 quid into a really, really good replica for about a 500 pound shoe. Do you know what? Don't be afraid to get a little bit haberdashery chic. <laughs> Every single week, our very own fashion insider, Alexa Chung, will be unzipping the world of high-end fashion and meeting all the kings and queens of couture. Meet the king of European bling, Roberto Cavalli. His leopard prints, explosive colours and cleavage-busting cuts have clung to the hottest A-list bodies in the world. From Sharon Stone to Kylie... J-Lo to Beyonce, he's been the choice of flesh-bearing celebs for years. And now he's the undisputed god of the wags. A firm favourite with Victoria Beckham, Cheryl Cole and Colleen McLaughlin. With an empire worth an estimated £1 billion, his style has made him very, very rich. So what's it like being Roberto? I've been granted a rare and exclusive invite to his palatial 32-acre retreat in Florence. Alexa! Oh, my God! Hello! <laughs> You're wonderful. Nice to meet so you. Pretty. Thank you for having us here. It's brilliant to look around where you live. There's a morning where I live. So this is only your part-time home? That is my relaxing place. OK. Do you understand? Usually, I go to New York, I try to get those ideas, the energy, everything, because that is fantastic, because yeah. I love party, I love people that make me laughing, smile. I come to, I come to Florence, I take one uh, mental shower. Yeah. I take care about my animal, but did you see how many animals yeah, I, I have? Yeah, I saw a massive dog outside. No, you should see one monkey. You've got a monkey? Had, he, he, she, I don't know, he, he's a boy. It's hard to tell. Adore me. Okay. Come on, baby. Thank I you. can show you that. Is you, you this know, guy the Dr. Doolittle of fashion? Is it right? <laughs> <laughs> Inside the mansion, I soon find out the true inspiration behind Cavalli's exotic collection. Parrots. <laughs> Excellent. Ara, come here. Come here, mother. I'm scared it's going to bite me. He's put, wow, he's tonguing you. <laughs> he's tonguing me, yeah. We kiss each other, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> His great colours, does that inspire your dresses? <laughs> For me, colours is positivity, is energy. And when you dress, if you put a small flash of colour, it's like if you give energy to yourself. Okay. That is the point. I don't like beige, grey, colours are my family. Mm -hmm. You understand? Come. My baby. 
Did you see the Beautiful. color? Beautiful, it's an amazing color. It's the same color of my boat. So, wow! That is beautiful, look at the color. It's blue, it should be blue. Okay, so we're getting the picture that Cavalli is really into color. Perhaps that's why he's got such a celeb packed client base. Although keeping track of who's in it can be tricky. We had Jerry Halliwell on the show, and she brought in some items that you, that I you gave Jerry, her. Jerry, I make. Uh... Posso fare una nutrizione? Che non è quella che. È quella delle slice. È quella con i capelli rossi. Ah, Jerry, I love you. <laughs> With the schmoozing out of the way, it was time to cut to the chase. What do you think of what I'm wearing? Oh, it's very nice on you. It's not my style, honestly. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, he hates it. In which case, can I spot a blagging opportunity? Yeah. This season, Cavalli's floaty frocks have inspired a frenzy of florals everywhere. You might have seen a copy on the high street, but what's it like to handle the real deal? I give you five minutes, seven minutes time to become Cavalli. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Kind of like the colours of his parrots. Beautiful. I can imagine J-Lo wearing that. I don't think that's too dissimilar to this, but he thinks this is ugly, so I guess it's a finer fabric. Oh, this one's amazing. That's brilliant. I think I might try this one on and see if it impresses Roberto. Okay, the final transformation into a Cavalli woman. I'm now head to toe in Roberto Cavalli. I'm going to show Roberto and see what he thinks. Don't get the back of this dress. Hello. Hi, how are you? So I'm in your outfit. Yeah. Oh my God. What do you Cavalli? think? Cavalli? Yes. My God. He might not recognize his own stuff, but thank God he likes what he sees. Every woman with this kind of dress is sexy enough. Yeah. I believe it. Look how you are, you're fantastic. Do you have any idea how much this outfit would cost, head to toe? No, I don't have an idea. No I idea. like to create it, but I don't know. I don't want to know about the cost, about the <laughs> price, because uh, sometimes they make me afraid. Yeah. Roberto may not know the prices, but I've checked the tags, and this little lot will set you back £2,155. I like the new demure look, so hopefully I'll get to keep this dress. I have to just nick it now. I've got 800 quid to challenge four designer outfits in a catwalk face-off in approximately eight minutes' time. With three of my high street outfits done and dusted, here's number four. I want one outfit on that runway today which looks contemporary, showy, slightly over the top. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with the shoes because I want the levels. So when I put the skirts on, I know exactly how short I'm going to go. I've already added a pair of white tights because I want to make it look pure and very, very simple. And coloured tights are great for really improving an outfit. What I've done is I've taken out the original laces, which were quite hard, and I've added in these flesh tone, really thin ribbons. OK, so this is where the outfit begins. This fabulous underskirt with all this frou-frou, gorgeous detailing just here is going to be the base to the whole outfit. Now, this detailing just here, I absolutely love already, but if you look closely, they can kind of look like roses if we just curl them up with a simple stitch, we can make that look better. So take it from the bottom, and then I'm going to take it through another couple of layers and bunch it together, or ruche it, it's called, instantly gives it a roundness and a slightly edgier feel. So next, I'm going to add on the top section, which is this fabulous flesh-toned chiffon blouse with a ruffle detail all the way over. It's also very sheer. The whole romantic scene, it, you have to see some flesh. It is a sexual look, and that's what this will do. Next! We're going to add on the top layer of the skirt to add more weight and more body to the outfit in a much harder, darker fabric. But at the moment, this sitting on top of this, it's ruining all the layers. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to gather this up and create a new dimension. And can you see that instantly now, it's creating this beautiful wave around the skirt, which feels more romantic and feels far more designer. Lovely. Finally, I'm going to add on here a belt. I don't want to see the join between the skirt and the blouse. We've got bows, we've got ribbons, we've got frills, we've got gathering, we've got ruching. This, to me, is the epitome of romance. And do you know what? Even I can't believe 
This is all under 200 smackers. So that's my shopping done for this week, but what about yours? What more insider must-haves? Oh, go on then. It's a dress, it's embellished, it's gold, so it's in. This is your summer solstice and your Christmas cracker rolled into one. This shirt has romance written all over it. Feminine, frilly and flirty. Dress up those jeans, set up that pencil skirt, but be quick, it's out on Monday. Now we are literally brush strokes away before my four high street outfits go head to head with the designers on the runway. I am absolutely bricking it because I am desperate to win. The catwalk face off, next. <laughs> So the romance inspired show is about to hit the runway. The four outfits that I've styled from the high street are about to go head to head with the four designer outfits. And this noisy lot are about to be my biggest critic. But first it's time for my final fashion fix. Every girl needs a fabulous floral frock this summer and I've chosen five of the best. Whether you want to blow a bonus on a Moschino or keep it cheap, here's my selection. Ditsy Prince, fabulous, Luella did it best. Pale pastel florals, great for pale summer skin. Nothing says romantic like ruffles, but keep them floating. And acid prints are great for lightening up any summer night. Fashion. We're minutes away from the catwalk. Four queens of designer fashion have each selected a romantic outfit. Money, no object. First of all, because nude and flesh color is such a great trend, we should do um, a nude look. I think that would be absolutely amazing. The sheer transparency and all the ruffles just makes it really sexy and romantic. Yeah, no, I think that sums up the trend perfectly. Four drop-dead gorgeous looks with a limitless budget. Me, just 800 smackers. I have to say, I didn't think this task was going to be that big. I am absolutely bricking it. Even though I'm so confident with what I've done, you know, it's a big thing taking on those designers. I mean, it's huge. They're the best designers in the whole wide world. And I've taken outfits from the high street at 200 quid a pop, put my own little got twist on them. Is it going to be good enough? I hope it is, because I really, really, really want to prove that everyone can look wonderful. I think we need a little bit longer. Perfect. And it needs, I think we need to just cut some off, actually. How's that feel? Is that all right? Is that too tight? No, that's fine. Okay. Okay, um, it's very exciting backstage. It's a hub of activity. There's lots going on. Everyone's doing the final preparations, including Gok, who I think is getting a little bit stressed out about it. Um, basically, what we've done, we've been quite sneaky and mixed up all the different looks. There's some um, designer ones and mixed with the high street. And basically, we're going to send them out in random order so the audience won't know which is which. And then they're going to create two lines on either side of the stage. And then the audience have to vote for whichever looks they prefer. So they don't know whether they're going to be voting for designer or high street. So, fingers crossed. Hope it goes well. Yo, what? 
tickets are looking absolutely stunning, whatever your spend. But now it's time to ask the audience which they like the best. On one side is the designer collection, and on the other is the collection I style from the high street. Looks of romance for this summer. What you have to do now is decide which side you prefer. If you like this side, vote with a pink card. Hold that up in the air. If you like this side, vote with a black card. Okay, so ready, steady. Hold up the cards. Ooh. It's close. Okay, so you've all uh, put up your votes, and I think by a mile, the pink side has won. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, guys, I can reveal to you lot that on the designer side, their outfits came to a total of. £13,508.50 and my side, all from the high street, that has been styled up within an inch of its life, comes in at a total of £755.65! Fashion. On next week's Fashion Fix, I get up close and personal with Miss Joan Collins. How many pairs of shoes do you have? I'll say about 500. 500. Alexa makes a splash road testing swimwear. There's an obvious problem here. <laughs> Fine, it's only slipped halfway yeah. though. And in the catwalk face off, I take on the fashionistas with sizzling summer brides. I've gone over a fiver and I've got no shoes. I hate this show. <laughs> <laughs>